Hi guys! Today I'm going to show you um, a Makume Gane that I've been messing around with and just doing different things with it. I'm going to make a smallish stack but I'm going to show you um, several different ways that you can utilise this this particular stack. Um, I was going with a fall look but it also looks kind of like a fire, so whatever you want to call it, fall slash fire Makume Gane. And what you're going to need is some translucent clay. Now I'm using Primo, you don't have to use Primo. But this is Primo rolled out onto setting number 3 on my Atlas 150, 0 being the thickest setting. So there's four equal squares of that. And then four equal squares of translucent again, but this time rolled a little bit thinner down to a number five. So they're the little squares that we're going to be using. I've also rolled out another sheet of translucent. This is rolled onto a two. I've got some black rolled onto a two. And I've also got a thin sheet of purple rolled onto um, a number eight, which is the second thinnest setting on my pasta machine. All right, so that's the clay you're going to need. Um, I've also got my Picasso, Picasso alcohol inks again, and this time I'm going to be using Ruby, Sunset, Marigold, and Orchid. So basically a purple, a red, an orange, and a yellow, if you don't have those specific alcohol inks. I've also got some purple mica powder, um, some chunky glitter and this is like a reddish colour. Uh, so there's that and I've also got some extra fine glitter. So there is quite a lot going on in this video. I've also got my Distress Crackle Paint again and some Copper Leaf. So there are all the things you're going to need. I'm just going to move some of it out of the way and just go with what we're actually using to start with. And also, of course, cutters and things like that. And because it's a Makume, just collect any kind of um, things that you can poke into the stack. I've got this little flower plunge cutter. Um, what else do I have? I've got this imprint stamp that I can use. Um, a ball tool just to make pokey things with it and this tool that my hubby used in the last video and I can't remember what it's called lady foot lady leg <laughs> whatever I just liked it because of the straight edge here but you can use whatever you want to um, and then just the standard tools blade brushes obviously cutters and everything is listed in my Amazon storefront link in the description and I think that's everything so I'm just going to move all this to one side and we're going to start with the thicker squares to start with oh and I've also got some wet wipes and some rubbing alcohol or otherwise known as isopropyl alcohol just to, for, to clean things up all right, first thing first then, let's just get our brush and just start applying this alcohol ink. So it's just one colour once on each square, like so. And I'm just going to brush it on. I'm just going to add a little bit more, I think, to a little bit darker than that. That's better. So just brush it on and leave it to dry. So that's the first colour. I'm just going to clean off my brush in between colours. And then I'm going to go with the next colour. This one's the ruby red. Same thing, just brush it on. Now you can see I'm not using that much clay, so you don't have to go with the exact amounts that I'm using. You can make a, a bigger stack if you want to. Just use more squares. And then 
the next colour. Let's go with this sunset orange. Again, just brush it on like so. And then last but not least, this marigold, which is a darkish yellow. Now, like I say, if you don't have these specific inks, it's no big deal. You can use a red, a purple, an orange, a yellow in whatever inks you've got. Okay, so just brush those on. And I'm just going to move it out the way a little bit and put it to one side to dry if I can find my blade. Okay, so I'm just going to move these out of the way, guys. And please excuse my fingers. They're in a real mess at the moment. These two especially, and this one a little bit. Um, it's... My skin's cracked and bleeding and I've actually got blisters on this one and it's all from the resin. I accidentally got some on me and I, I am allergic to it. Um, and I am naughty because I should wear gloves every time I use it but I, I haven't and it hasn't bothered me. And I've been using the same resin for probably two years now and it hasn't bothered me and all of a sudden it did. And this has happened with other resins in the past, so I'm obviously allergic to it, but it, for some reason it takes a while for, you know, I keep changing my resin. And this one went quite a while before it attacked me. <laughs> so that's why I'm all cotted up today, because they're very sore. Alright, so we've got the four colours here. Now, the thinner squares, I'm just going to get my copper foil, uh, copper leaf. And I'm just going to put copper leaf on every single one of these. So I've got my tweezers ready. And I'm just going to pull out some of these flakes. And just bop them on the top of there. Now while I'm doing this, and I'm sure I'm getting plenty of eye rolls, but you know what? I just feel like I do have to defend myself. Now, I do free tutorials. These tutorials are available to anybody and everybody who wants to watch them at no charge to you. Um, having said that, this is my livelihood as well, because even though you don't have to pay anything to, towards them, um, my, my videos are monetized, so I do get some revenue. Now, I'm not a millionaire or anything, it's not earning me that much money, it's earning me enough, but that's beside the point. The fact is, this is my living, this is how I make my money, um, but it's keeping it free to you. Now, anybody is entitled to watch this tutorial or any of my tutorials and recreate the pieces that I've sh that I'm showing you or have shown you in my other videos that is the whole point of me doing these videos is to share um, you know my techniques and style and everything else and I'm absolutely fine with people recreating my pieces or the pieces and I'm absolutely fine with people recreating those pieces and selling them this is the whole point of these videos. What I'm not fine with, and this isn't the first time it's happened, and no doubt it will happen again, is people recreating my tutorials. And I mean literally recreating them step by step. Um, it's not on. It really isn't on for anybody to do that to anybody else. This is our livelihood. This takes time and effort to work out every single video that we do. And there's people out there that are just watching watching videos, and in this case, my videos. And then within a matter of days of me releasing one of my tutorials, recreating the whole thing on TikTok. 
TikTok, yes, which is ridiculous because TikTok is meant to be just quick little short snippets of a video. This person is recreating whole tutorials, but she's doing them in four or five, you know, different phases because she can't record it all in one go. That's beside the point though. What she's doing is wrong. And nowhere does she give me credit. Nowhere does she redirect people to the link as to where she got the tutorial. And quite honestly, it's actually really pointless for one. If there's already a video out on a specific thing, why do you need to recreate it? I'll tell you why, because she's making money off of it. And it's just wrong. So I'm not going to mention any names this time. But I will if she does it again. It's just not on, guys. Sorry for rant, the rant and sorry that, you know, I feel like I need to defend myself. But it's not just for me. It's for every creator out there who's going through that same thing with people who think they can get away with it. Whew. Can you tell I'm annoyed? <laughs> rant over. <laughs> All right. So we've got our four colours. And we've got our four pieces with the um, leaf on it. Now what I want to do with each of these... Um, leaves is take the uh, squares is take the ruby and the sunset alcohol inks and I'm just going to drop actually yeah I'm just going to drop a little bit of each of those colors onto each of these squares like so So yeah, guys, you know, I feel bad having to bring these things up, but it's just, I just find it so morally wrong and so unfair to people that are trying to earn a living doing tutorials and other people are just ripping them off. It's just out of order. And I'm sure there's people out there that are rolling their eyes at me, don't care. At the end of the day, you know, I have a right to defend myself. I Honestly, guys, I am actually really mad about this one. Because it wasn't even just a very generic um, technique that she was using. She actually recreated, as a tutorial, one of my canes. One of my canes. My design. An original design. And not one mention of where she got it from. So, anyway, I'll shut up now. Uh, I know I said I'd shut up before when I carried on, didn't I? It's just, this one's really, really got my goat. And I mean really got my goat. And... Uh, Anyway, so now I'm putting on the um, the Sunset Alcohol ink on each of those squares, just dabbing it over like so. As simple as that. And we should really let that dry. So before I move on to the next step, I am just going to let these dry a little, for a little longer and I will be back. These are all dry now, so next step, we're just going to take each of the four coloured squares and the ones that have got the copper leaf on, and we're just going to stack them. No particular order, I guess. No, no particular order. So let's go with this. So I'm taking the yellow one and I'm topping it with one with leaf on it and sticking to me, followed by orange and another one of those followed by the red followed by one of those and that on the top and that one's going to have to go underneath because you need the color on top so I'm just going to lift that and plop that one there okay so you've got a little stack layered up like so very simple and I'm just going to give it a quick roll to stretch it out and thin it down a little bit. 
and just a heads up when you've got um, metal leaf in the layers like that sometimes it resists sticking but you just have to keep playing with it until it sticks and I'm actually panicking now guys I'm not sure I've made enough I'll have to see I'm wondering if I actually did more um, squares in the last one that I did but we'll see all right so when you've rolled out your little stack it's you know not that thick fairly thin really but we are taking thin slices so fingers crossed I've got enough so make sure it's nice and stuck to your tile and then grab the the purple clay that was rolled out onto a thin setting which in this case was number eight and just place it on top like so make sure it's firmly stuck on there just get rid of some of this excess don't need all of that not that it matters if it's hanging over a little bit but all right so there's the stack topped with the purple now again you don't have to use purple as the top color if you don't want to um, I just really like the purple running through this and then I'm going to get my little flower plunge cutter somebody asked me in my group that she, um, if my plunge cutters had a point on them and I told them they did they didn't but actually they do um, but that's fine anyway <laughs> all right so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to push it down and then I am going to use the plungy bit up there just to get that little indentation in the center of the flower lift it up and it's likely to come out these plunge cutters do pull them back out but that's okay because I'm going to flip it upside down anyway and then place it back try and place it back in the right place fit it back in there like so give it a little push so like I say I have turned this one upside down again optional you don't have to and then I'm just going to do another little one here on the edge and another little one here and it's not even the whole flower this one came out but you can't flip that because oh actually I suppose you could flip that yeah I will I'll put it that way okay but I'm not flipping that one um, what else anything really guys anything that makes a cool impression so I'm just gonna run that down into there I'm actually gonna make a hole and it's fine like that it's got an open space in that flower and that's cool as well and I'll do the same on all of them just push it down it's cool to have open spaces on Bakume now I've got this little imprint cutter which is really just to cut out you know a single piece to make a pendant or whatever but I am going to use it just for the um, pattern that it creates and all the cutters I'm using today are from Ojoy Creations and I will leave a link to her website in my description. I love her and I love her cutters. She's an amazing person. She's like one of the most generous, kind people I know in the clay world. So props to her. I was just re-pushing that in because I don't think I went deep enough with it um, and I'm going to use that thing that my hubby used in my last video whatever it's called just to make some you know I just really like the shape of it just little divots like that just push it all the way through down to the bottom of the stack Just random. Let's go with a little squiggly. So I've got my um, zigzag cutter. I'm just going to put a few of those in there as well. Or maybe just a couple. Like so. And I think I will do a few more 
little holes here and there just push down so you can make this pattern you know as busy as you want to or minimalistic whatever you prefer I'm just going to put a few little divots in that one I'm just kind of filling the whole piece up really guys but you can do as much pattern as you want all right so I think I'm good with that I'm not going to completely close this back up but I'm just going to give it a little roll just to make sure it's all stuck down like that isn't but oh well try and push it back down a bit so you see I'm not completely closing it up guys that's I don't want to I like to leave an open look sometimes on my Makume first thing first then I'm going to bring my um, sheet of trans over that I already rolled out and that's on a number two and I'm going to start taking actually the first thing I'm going to do is try and get one fullish sheet and that can be one pendant so this is the first way that I'm going to show you and I'm really hoping I've got enough of a stack here guys but there you go so that can be a pendant all on its own so I'm just going to place that on there for now and that's a standalone piece so I'm just going to get rid of that just put that to one side for the moment and we're just going to fill this this piece up with little um, shavings And just place it wherever on on the clay like so let's get a little bit of that flower in there and just put that there so you're just taking fairly thin slices So that's that one. I'm just going to lift this up and bring these two over. Let's go with this one first. So this is um, little little um, blah, blah, blah. slices taken off and placed on the translucent clay. I'm just going to give that a quick roll and a burnish. And I use these steel soaps. Again, this is listed in my Amazon storefront. Link in the description. And I'm just giving this a good old burnish. I want it nice and flush and smooth on that backing clay. And I'm doing it on paper because I don't want any shiny spots. I don't really like baking on tile. Although I guess it doesn't really matter if you're going to resin the back, which I probably will, probably will, so it doesn't matter that much. But sometimes I don't like to resin the backs. I like just, you know, a smooth clay background or backing. Okay, so I'm just burnishing this. Just make sure it's nice and smooth, and that's good. So the first thing I'm going to do then is get my first cutter. In this case it's this one and I'm going to find a spot that I like and what am I doing what am I doing but I'm going to leave a little bit of the translucent at the bottom okay just a little bit not too much I really like that bit there though. I wish I'd laid these out differently. This is another thing you can perhaps take a little bit more time. Actually, let's just go there instead. I can still leave some trans at the top. No, no, I'm not. I'm doing it this way. Okay. Let's bring it up there a bit. Sorry, decisions, decisions. Okay, that's good. So I'm just going to cut that out. 
and like I say there's a little bit of trans left over and you'll see why in a second I'm just making sure this is going all the way through and I'm going to cough excuse me guys <coughs> now there is a little bit left so I could probably you utilize that for something which I probably will maybe make some earrings or something but I'm just going to remove that for now and just concentrate on this all right so I've got my piece I've cut it out but there's this little bit of trans left at the bottom and that's where the crackle comes into play and it's just it's not rocket science it's just a little bit of extra something something to bling up your makume let's bling the makume so I'm just going to get some of this and I'm going to put it on fairly thick the thicker you put it on the thicker the crackle or you can brush it on you know just very lightly then you get a finer crackle but I want this to look quite thick and I'm just kind of following where that makume pattern blends onto the clay so I'm just kind of blobbing it on Alright, so that's pendant number one, but it needs to um, go to one side to dry off. So, while that's drying, we can work on the next one. So I'm just going to put that over there. Grab some more paper. And this is just the standalone pendant, so this is just pretty straightforward. But I just thought it'd be cool to show you different ways, you know, to dress up your pendants. Let's give that a quick roll and then a burnish again this needs to be thoroughly burnished so it's nice and smooth on the clay no lumpy bits now the ones I made yesterday not bragging or anything because I'm not a bragger but I absolutely love how they came out and I'm really hoping I can get these close to the same now obviously they're not going to be identical because it's makume and it all depends on how you lay your slices and how you stack them everything else the colors are identical um, the stamping implements that I used are identical but they might not look identical <laughs> all right so this is just a standalone pendant and I'm going to go with this one. It's the same as this one, but just a little bit smaller. And I'm not leaving any of the translucent on this one. I'm just going to cut straight down into that. And that's just the standalone. Nothing else on it, just Makume. Okay. So there's that one. And again, I'll try and utilize that scrap. So that's pendant number two. So pendant number one. Pendant number two. This still needs to dry. So I'll move on to the next one. And this time I'm bringing over my black clay. Whoops. Now this is where I really, really hope it works out the same as I did yesterday because it just looked so cool. But either way, I'll show you them at the end so you can see. Um, so I've got my black clay on some paper. I'm bringing my stack over again. And now I'm just going to start cutting through very thin slices. And it has to be thin because this stack is not that thick in the first place. Like I say, you can make the stack bigger if you want to. But I've already made a ton of these, so I didn't want to make too many more. Um, let's go here. Just bring it down. And obviously you can flip over and see which side you like the best. So I'm just going to put that there, like so. And let's see if I can just fit another little piece on there. Where do I want to go with this? Doesn't really matter, I guess. 
just wherever. And I'm just going to plonk that there. Now I'm only going to put enough clay to accommodate one cutter. So this is this is pendant number three. And what am I doing? I just need to move this out of the way again, guys. Bring this over. Whoops. Give it a quick roll just to make sure that's on there nicely. Don't worry about the little bits of flake, flaky copper leaf coming up. And again, a really good burnish. We want all those edges to be seamless on the clay. Like this. And you can just lift it to feel sure it's smooth maybe just a little bit more and that's that so there's that pattern and for this one I'm going to use this butterfly and I deliberately left a little strip of black down there just because I think it looks cool to have that it almost looks like the body of the butterfly but on this one, I'm going to leave a little bit of the black showing. It would have been nice if I had some black showing at the bottom. Or wait a minute, let me see if it works better with the larger butterfly. Although that's probably a bit too big. Yeah, never mind. We'll stick with this one. So I'm just kind of lining that up to make sure there's a little bit of black showing. Okay. So there's that one so that's pendant number three oops that one didn't want to come out did it no problem so that's the butterfly and I absolutely love that one. Wait till, you, wait till you see it finished. So you can see I just left little tips of black on this and a little bit of black down the centre. So that's pendant number three. <coughs> and now, last but not least, and I'll still have enough to make several more pieces from this, but I'm just going to quickly do some earrings as well. So I'm just going to take a few more slices Just enough to make some cute earrings. Oh, let's flip it this way and see what happens. Scrummy. Scrummy licious. Um, let's just plonk that there because I am just doing some earrings, but I am going to probably fill this area up and utilize this bit but not on camera that's just for whenever but I'm just going to make sure this is going to accommodate my earring cutters which it does uh, yeah that's fine all right so I've made three pendants and a pair of earrings and I've still got all of this left so yeah it's a thin stack but you can get quite a lot out of it guys anyway I'm just going to give this a quick roll a quick burnish and then I'm going to put these in the oven and bake them and then I'll come back and show you the next step. I've, here's my little tipsy. She's not made an appearance for a while. What's up baby girl? I know. Oh dear. What? Can you hear her guys? So I'm just cutting out one earring and again I'm leaving some black on there. Hello. What's wrong? Oh, I know. So I've just left a little bit of black there. 
So that's earring number one. And then earring number two, same thing. Just going to leave a little bit of the black showing at the bottom like that. And um, I will be utilising the rest of that stack. But just for the sake of this video, these are the pieces. Let me just move that out of the way. Let me just move this out of the way and bring the pieces over again so you can see. So there's the butterfly, which I already love and it's not even finished. Put those on there, like so. You know what, I find it so hard to work with these things on my fingers. I feel really clumsy with them, but I haven't got a lot of choice right now. And there's that one, and then this one with the crackle on it. I'm just wanting to see if it's dry, and I think it is. But there's those pieces. I'm just stalling for time guys because this isn't completely dry yet so just bear with me and I'm just kind of tidying up a little bit as soon as my desk gets all cluttered I get a little flustered so I like things to be tidy it doesn't always stay tidy all right so pendant number one pendant number two pendant number three with earrings so we've got a pendant that's got a little bit of translucent showing at the bottom with some um, crackle medium painted on there. We've got just a straight up Makume with nothing on it. We've got a butterfly with some black showing showing, and some earrings with some black showing. And they're going to go and get baked and then we'll do some more work with them. For this one, I'm just going to get some purple mica powder and quite simply brush it on the crackled area and I'm hoping it's dry enough but that's as easy as that but it just adds a little extra something I don't think it's dry it just adds a little extra something to the piece so just brush it on and um, that's it it wasn't completely dry guys so it's gone a little bit thick just here but it's fine all right so that's just a very simple way of dressing it up just adding a little bit of crackle and a little bit of color all right rambling over these are all going to go in the oven I'm probably going to play around a little bit more with my leftover pieces and I'll be back these have been baked and that's what they look like so far. I haven't sanded them other than the edges just to smooth off the edges a little bit. So there's those two pieces, just the standalone Makume and the one that had that little bit of crackle on it. They're just going to get resined. And then there's the butterfly one. Again, this is they're all going to be resined, but you'll see I'm going to add extra little bits to these ones. So these are all going to be resined. And what I do is I get a tile, I get some tape, sticky side up, and then hold it down and put my pieces on the tape so it doesn't move around when I'm putting resin on. So I'm just going to put those on there. Like I say, I'm just going to put some resin on these. So I'm not going to show you all of that, but um, I'll show you on. So this is what I'm going to do to all of these pieces. I'm just going to add some resin like so. And this is where the colours really start to show. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. All right, so I'm just going to plop some resin on there. Don't know why I sounded French there. <laughs> oh dear. All right, let me just find a silicon brush that doesn't have anything on it because I'm terrible at cleaning them. That's actually got a little bit of glitter on it. I always have little bits stuck on them. Anyway, I've got myself a silicon brush and I'm just going to drag the resin over this butterfly like this and just gently drag it to the edges. like 
like so. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to do the same thing to all of these pieces. But I will just quickly finish this one. I just I just like to turn it and try and see if there's any bits that I've missed. Because when you're under the light, it's difficult to tell. I think I've got it all. Alright, so that's that one. And I'm going to do the same for all of the others. Oh, missed a bit there. I'm actually just going to add a little bit more resin. Just a touch. I had to make sure it's really covered well. I think that's good now. Okay, there's a bit there I missed. Anyway, I'll play with that a little bit more, but this will go under the UV lamp to cure. But before I do that, I get one of these long lighters and just quickly run it over the piece and that just bursts any bubbles that might float to the surface. like so and I'll put it under the UV lamp and cure it I'll do the same for all the other pieces and I will be back these are cured the other two are still under the lamp just giving them a little longer longer cure because these are going to go back under so all right so remember I left these little black tips and all I'm going to do is get some more resin and I've just got a tile for that and I'm just going to pull a little bit on there like so and I'm going to take let me just move these ones out of the way though because I don't want to get gold glitter on those ones so let me just move those up there so we're working on the butterfly and I've got my extra fine gold glitter you don't have to use gold glitter you could use whatever colour you would prefer and I've just tipped it into the resin I'm just going to give it a quick mix like so and where those black bits are, I'm just going to add a touch of gold. It's just to add another little extra blingy bit to your butterfly. I'm not going to cover all of the black. I'm just doing these little tips of the wings. And I might just drag a little bit down there like that. Just on the edge. Simple as that. But very effective, I think. Same on this side. Just turn this around a little bit so I can see what I'm doing from this angle and again just add that glitter and I'm just bringing it down here a little bit um, do I want to add any more anywhere I think I'll just add a little bit on the body itself so I'm going to give him a little gold head like that maybe just a little drizzle down there for his little body and that's all I'm gonna do so there's that one very simple okay and then for the earrings same thing um, I'm gonna get another little blob of resin not too much and I'm going to get my little jar of chunky glitter but I'm not going to tip that into the resin I keep knocking things over guys first the glitter now the resin and I'm just gonna apply some of the resin to the black parts again just 
over the whole area of the black. So this part of the piece is going to be slightly raised because you're adding an extra layer of resin there. Got some glitter in that. And I'm just kind of squiggling it around to line up with the pattern, you know, the form it took. Just do that. I've got little bits of gold glitter in this. Not that it really matters, I suppose. Try and get those out though. Now you could just add the gold glitter here if you wanted to, but I thought I would go with the chunky glitter in a different colour. So I'm just going to do both earrings. this way and take a look. Just make sure I've got it all the way to the edge. I don't want that bit had glitter in it but I think that's good anyway. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up a little bit of resin on my silicon brush. And it's easy to pick these little chunks up and I'm just going to place just a few, not too many, into the resin like so. These little pieces are cute too. They're all different size pieces. Same on this one, just drop those in there like so. Move them around to where you want them to be. And try and, you know, press them down into the resin. Let's see if I can grab a little piece. It's a little fiddly and sometimes it doesn't cooperate, it doesn't want to stick. I'll try again. I just want some smaller pieces. I'm just going to move these around a little bit. I'm just trying to get them a little bit covered with resin. I might need to add just a fraction of resin on those. Just to make sure they're covered. like so and I think we're good tiny bit more just there and I think I'm done oh, I'm just going to add one more little piece there like so alright so that's it I'm just going to go and finish curing these just going to give that resin a little blast. I'm going to go and finish curing these and I'll be back. All right guys the pieces are finished as pieces but I haven't made them into jewellery or anything. I've not quite decided how I'm going to do that so I'll just show you them as is and that's the butterfly. I absolutely love it but that's the butterfly. That's the first one. Let me just bring you down a bit, that's as far as I can take it. So, like I say, excuse my ugly fingers right now, but there's the butterfly. And then this is the one that I did just as, you know, one standalone piece. Look at the colours in that. Gorgeous. So like I say, fall or flame, fall or fire. I think fall or flame sounds better. So it's fall or flame, Makume Gane. And this is the other piece that I did where I just added the little bit of um, 
crackle and mica powder at the bottom it just adds a little extra something again I've not decided what I'm going to do with these I think I might wire wrap these and I might even do a video one day when, to show you how I do that I only do very simple because I'm not that good at it and I don't really know that much about it <laughs> and, and they're the earrings just just that little extra bit of bling and I love them and I actually thought you know butterfly and these kind of do look a little bit like butterfly wings so that would be a really nice set I think so they're the pieces from today and I just want to show you the other pieces that I made and they're identical shapes but just to see if there's any difference and there really isn't so that's from today and that's another one that I did very similar and I think I actually glittered the back of this one yeah I glittered the back of this one with resin and I do have a video on how I do that I will leave a link so there's those two and then this is the other one that I did the same as this one um, the flower showed up more on this one and I think it's because there's less red in that area but they still look nice and there's a little bit more purple showing in that one but same thing exactly the same technique I'm just going to give this a wipe it's got a few smudges on it so there's that one and then I did the same thing I did some more earrings much in, in much the same way as those ones that I did today and there they are Okay, so like I say, they're all the same. That one's actually got a little bit of a divot in it. I might have to go back over that with resin. We'll see. So there's all these from today. Wait, which one was which? Yeah, like that. And then last but not least, the other butterfly that I did. And I think I like this one even more than this one. I don't know. They're both gorgeous. I just kind of like how the little dots came out on this one. Reminiscent of butterfly, I guess. But they're the butterflies. Anyway, I feel like I've rambled on forever today, guys. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to show you um, how I finish them because I haven't decided. I'll just present them to you as capuchons. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you later. Bye.